My consciousness fades away. I really can't recover this time. I was somehow saved when I was killed by Lancer, but that won't happen again. There's probably no magic that can save a person who has lost most of their stomach. What were you thinking? Don't you know I can't save you again? I hear an angry voice. It's probably Tosaka. She seems really angry, and, and I'm sorry. But it can't be helped. It's not like I can do everything like Tosaka. All I could use was my body. So that's why the only thing I could do was to use my body to shield Saber. Two, 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 three! Fate for partner? This is a story from a winter five years ago. It was a night with a beautiful moon. I wasn't doing anything, just watching the moon with Kuritsugu. Even though it was winter, the weather wasn't cold. The corridor was only a little chilly, and it was a good night to enjoy the moon. Back then, Kuritsugu didn't leave the house much. Not going outside, he would just laze carelessly around the house. I regret it even now, thinking back to it. Why didn't I notice that it was like the actions of an animal that knows its time of death? When I was a child, I wanted to be a superhero. Suddenly, that man himself a superhero in my child's eyes. That man, himself a superhero in my child's eyes, say, said that as if yearning for it. What? What do you mean by wanted? Did you give up? I became angry and asked him. Kuritsugu laughed apologetically and looked up at the sky. Yes, unfortunately being a hero is a time-limited thing, and it becomes hard to call yourself that when you grow up. I wish I'd found out that out earlier. I agreed with that. I didn't know why, <laughs> but I thought it couldn't be wrong because Kuritsugu said so. I see. Then I guess it couldn't be helped. Yeah, it really couldn't be helped. Kuritsugu answers. So, of course, my sponsor was determined. Yeah, it can't be helped, so I'll take your place. It's impossible since you're an adult, but it should be all right for me. Let me take on your dream. I'll make it come true. Before I could finish, my father laughed. He made a face like he didn't even need to hear the rest. After breathing in, Emiya Kuritsugu said, Yeah, I'm relieved. He quietly closed his eyes, and his life ended. Since he looked so peaceful, I thought he would wake up again in the morning, so I didn't disturb him. Perhaps being used to seeing death factored in... Perhaps being used to seeing... Perhaps being used... To seeing death factored... Fuck. I, some of this is just translated weird for me. Without doing anything, I just looked up at the man who is my father as he entered a long sleep. There were no sounds of insects in the garden as it was silent. In the bright night, I remember only my eyes being hot. I did not cry out, nor did I feel sad. But I could not stop my tears until the moon sunk. That is the story from away here. Where did I go? Man, I'm yawning so much. I'm sorry, guys. Perhaps I cried ten years worth of tears since after that. There was nothing. Fujine's father planned the funeral and I started... Fujine's father planned the funeral and I started living in his house by myself. Nothing changed, even though Kuritsugu was gone. Emiya Shiro would become a superhero like Emiya Kuritsugu. So there was no time to be playing around. That's right. I didn't mention it, but I remember perfectly. The figure of the man who saved me, who was left to the fire ten years ago. He held up in his arms an unconscious child about to die from burns. He became so happy that tears welled up in his eyes and took the child outside. From that time, he was the subject of my admiration. No one saved me. I couldn't save anyone. In it all, I was saved and a person was there to save me. That's why I decided to become like that. 
become a superhero that I could save people and let no one be killed, just like him. Kuritsuku died peacefully, leaving me his dream of becoming a superhero himself. It's only natural for a child to succeed their father. Imiyashiro must become a superhero and save someone, just like the old me. I swore so as a child, to fulfill the dream of the man I'd admired the most. But honestly, I don't get it. What this superhero thing is supposed to be, how to become one, how to make everyone happy like Kuritsugu always said, and I became this thing called a master, and things like the blonde haired girl followed me around is so confusing my head, and, and really... When I open my eyes, and if I'm in a familiar room. What? I'm in my own room? As soon as I speak, I start to feel terribly sick. Uh, it tastes bad. In my mouth. I taste blood. Maybe it was filling my mouth, but I breathe in thick air. I'm not sure why I feel like this. I feel really sick to my stomach, so I want to go to the bathroom and wash my face. All right, I stand up. I feel dizzy. I almost fall and support myself by putting a hand against the wall. Ugh. The nausea increases when I move. No, this is more like pain than nausea. My body is heavy and it feels like my stomach is turning every time I move. Maybe someone would feel like this if someone poured burning lead into their stomach. Imagining that is giving me headaches. I wipe the sweat off my forehead and wobble out of my room. Alright, I feel better now. I wash my face and wipe the sweat off my body. There are bandages wrapped around my stomach for some reason. I can't recall anything about them, so I leave them, I leave them be for now. I'm hungry, I wonder if there's any leftovers. Even though my stomach feels terrible, my body wants energy. C putting my mind into it, I start to walk along the wall. Need a sip of water. You take a water break. I still feel dizzy. My body feels dull. Ow, ow, ow. I walk forward, letting out miserable sounds. Really. What did I do before going to bed? I don't remember any training that could have caused this pain. I, re I reached the living room. Sakura and Fujine must be at school. There's no breakfast prepared in the living room and there's none of Fujine's loudness. The quiet living room is like a typical Sunday. Hey, it's Tosaka. Good morning. I'm afraid I came in without asking you, Emiya-kun. No, it's not that. No, it's not. What? Tosaka Rin is sitting on a cushion. Her calmness is, makes me think I'm the guest in this, in this house and not her. I don't know how to answer her. First of all, I sit down. And then I take a deep breath and ask, Tosaka, why? Hold on. Could you apologize first? I can't calm down until I hear an apology for last night. Angry face. It's good for thumbnail. I don't even have time to ask her why she's here. Tosaka is glaring at me like, re like she's really mad. It seems she's really angry about last night, but what happened last night? W but what happened last night? There you go. Hold on. I recall it now. That's right. Why am I so relaxed? I tried to save Saber, and Berserker blew away my stomach. Ugh. The nausea returns. I feel a chill, remembering the feeling of having a hole in my body. Something in my stomach moves. Feels really sick. Feels really sick. But that's definitive proof that I'm alive. Wait, that's weird. Shouldn't that have been instant death for me? Strange. Why and why the hell am I alive? Do you remember the stupid thing you did last night? If you do, then please review your actions. 
Tosaka lets out a humph and criticizes me. Huh. That's really annoying. My head, which was frozen by the fact that Tosaka is here, finally resumes activity again. What are you saying? There was nothing else to do at that time. Oh, well, it does look stupid if you just look at the results, but I was going to do it better. So it wasn't a mistake. I protest, glaring at her. Huh? What? What? Why is she sighing? Didn't I tell you that servants will disappear if their masters are killed? So it's true to try to protect your servant. What? What? Uh, what? Look, I don't. She's just missing the fangs. She just needs a fang, and she's full Sudere. Look, Saber will disappear if you're killed. If you want to save Saber, think of a way to do so from a safe place. Jeez, don't you understand that protecting your servant with your life is just meaningless? It's not that I protect her with my life, I tried to save her, and it just happened to work out like that. I don't think things would end up like that either. I did think I would be killed if I went near that monster, but that's a different matter. Facepalm. <laughs> I see, you seem to misunderstand. As if, she's re as if she's read my mind, she sulks even more. Look, Emiya-kun, I'll come out and say it, but I didn't take you to the church to help you win. I was trying to help you stay alive, even if you were left on your own. Seems you didn't understand that part of it. Help me stay alive. That's right, you shouldn't take risks if you realize that a loss equals your death. You seem to be someone who would walk out at night by yourself even in a situation like this. If I threatened you, I thought you wouldn't have take I thought you wouldn't take risks and you might get through this. I see. I didn't notice that. So that's why she's complaining to me about not realizing that and running at Berserker. So, why are you mad, Tosaka? It shouldn't bother you if I'm the one that made the mistake. Of course it bothers me. You made me worry for the whole night. <laughs> oh, Tozaka's the best. Tozaka throws out a temper. But I see. I'm honestly happy she's worrying about me. Looking at the situation, it seems Tozaka was the one who treated my wound. I see. I guess you helped me out. Thank you. I bow my head to show my thanks and apologize. <laughs> <Does. laughs> it's fine if you understand. If you've learned from this, try to act smarter next time. Tosaka looks away. Her gesture is snappy, but it seems she's in a mood again. A good mood. Then we're done with that with what then we're done with what happened last night. I'll go into the main topic, but which do you want me to talk about? About last night or about something serious? Tosaka starts a conversation, as if it's natural to do so. Her straightforwardness surprises me, but thinking about it, she's here because she has something to talk about. If she didn't have business with me, she would have gone home already. What is it that what is it that Tosaka, my enemy, wants to discuss in her enemy's territory? I'm interested in that, and I also want to know what happened last night. It's stupid not to ask, so I Ask about yesterday. Ask about serious stuff. I have a billion fat billing about this. I don't want to hear either. Ask about serious stuff. Ask about yesterday. Ask about the serious stuff. I'm more interested in why Tosaka is here. Then I want to hear about the serious matter. I want to know why you stayed here. Alright. Then I'll ask for your conclusion first. What, what is it? Seems for a second like Tosaka was disappointed. Then I'll be direct about it. What are you planning to do from now on? She asked directly, the one question I don't want to be asked. No, that's not it. It's not that I don't want her to ask me, but I haven't made my mind up yet. I'm the one who wants to ask. What do I do now? Honestly? I don't know. You say I should fight for the Holy Grail, but I've never been in a fight between Magi. Wait, what happened to Saber? Are we not going to address Saber? 
Is that what the first option was, addressing Saber? Probably should have picked that option, shouldn't I? Well, I've picked this one now. First of all, I want to try to avoid killing people. Most of all, I'm not interested in something mysterious like the Holy Grail. I'm not too sure about risking my life for something I don't want. I knew you'd say that. You'll be killed by your servant if you say something like that. What? Why would I? Because the servant's goal is also the Holy Grail. They can be summoned by the masters because the condition on their summoning is that they obtain the Holy Grail. The most important thing for a servant is to obtain the Holy Grail. A lot of redundancies in this translation. They obey their master and risk their life for their master because they have a chance of obtaining the Holy Grail. So just try saying that you don't want the Holy Grail. You can't complain if they kill you and call you a betrayer. What is that? That's weird because servants are what the master summons, right? So? Do you think a servant would obey a human for no reward? The Holy Grail grants the wish of what, uh, whoever obtains it. The servant of the master who obtains it is no, section, no exception. Even the servants have their own wishes. That is why they respond to the otherwise impossible summoning. It's not that the masters are summoning the servants to obtain the Holy Grail. The servants are answering the master's call because they can obtain the Holy Grail. Servants have their own desires. But does that mean Saber has a wish he wants the Holy Grail to grant? That's why the servants try to eliminate the other servants even without their mass, even without orders from their masters. Only one can obtain the Holy Grail. They cannot accept other masters obtaining the Holy Grail. Unlike their masters, they don't have the power to take away the command spells, so the only way they can disarm other masters is to kill them. So even if the master has no intention of fighting, battle is inevitable. A master who is attacked by a servant must fight it off with their own servant. You heard enough from Kide to know that this is the nature of the Holy Grail War, right? Yeah, he told me th that last night. But that means allowing your servant to try to kill other servants. I thought it would be over if I reached a comprise with the other masters. But if the servants are one summoned to obtain the Holy Grail, and if it is true that they will not give it up, that a battle between servants is inevitable, then... The girl that fought to protect me is also ready to kill or be killed to obtain the Holy Grail. That's awful. I don't know about this heroic spirit thing, but Saber is human. She was bleeding badly yesterday, too. Finally. Oh, don't worry about that. There's no life or death for the servants. Even if servants are eliminated, they just go back to where they belong. Heroic spirits are a phenomenon, so they can't be killed. The only ones that can be killed during a fight are their masters. No, but still, even if it's a temporary death, there's still the fact that some human shaped that something human shaped has disappeared from this world. What? Are you saying it's murder? Are you still carrying carrying such a sense of justice even though you're a magus? Tosaka is not happy with me. <laughs> Her comment is only natural. As a magus death is always right behind me. I understand it, I'm already prepared for that, but still, I'm not strong enough to judge people's deaths as good or bad. Of course, I won't participate in a fight to the death. Oh, so you're just going to wait for the others to kill you? You're, s you're seeding the, uh, eh. I, uh, so you're seeding the victory to other masters. That's not right. The point is to survive to the end, right? I don't have any intention of killing others, but I'll have no mercy in a fight to protect myself. If the opponent is out to kill me, they won't complain if they are killed in return, right? Oh, so you'll be be staying on the defensive. Then you'll just be observing what other masters are doing, right? So, even if someone like yesterday goes around killing everyone, you're just going to ignore it? Someone like yesterday? She must mean that inhuman monster. Superhuman strength that allows the destruction of a house or two with a single blow. Certainly, if that thing wished, the town could be in ruins in just one night. 
And on top of that, the problem is that the servants are normally in spirit form. Humans can't see those in spirit form. But since the servants can affect the real world as spirits, you could call them the most powerful weapon. With the technology we have now, there are no weapons that can affect a spiritual being. Our attacks are useless against them, and their attacks can damage us. It's not just a one-sided game. Murder by a servant is like a natural death for normal people. Death caused by an invisible killer will just be treated as accidental death or suicide. What is that? Servants know? Masters. The servants just attack other masters. What other... Other people have nothing to do with them, right? Yeah, I really wish that was the case, but if it were, you wouldn't need a supervisor like Kide, would you? I should have said earlier that servants are spirits. They are already complete, so they don't grow. But magical energy used as a fuel is different. The more magical energy they have available, the more they can use the powers they had in life. That part is the same as for us Magi, don't you understand? I do, so they can use magic repeatedly, right? You could say magical energy is the gunpowder to fill a gun, and the Magus is the gun itself. The type of gun depends on the Magus's ability. Pistol, rifle, machine gun, shotgun. Using that metaphor, servants are cannons. Using a large amount of gunpowder, they fire a large bullet. That's right, servants aren't given their mana by nature. They act with the magical energy within them. We masters supply it, so servants can only use their powers using their magical energy, their own magical energy plus the magical energy of their master. But that means an amateur master like you would be no match for other masters, right? So there's a loophole. Well, I guess you can call it an obvious answer. Servants can supplement their magical energy from other sources. Servants are spirits, so they can get nourishment from eating things like that. Like that from eating things that are like them. Hmm? Nourished by eating things that are like them. Things like them? You mean spirits? But what kind of spirits would they eat? It's a simple answer. Nature spirits obtain power from nature itself. So, where do you think servants, human spirits, get their power from? Oh. It is a simple answer. As we humans eat meat, the human spirits. Exactly. Uselessly, they are, usually they replenish enough magical energy from their master, but it's obvious that one gets more magical energy from many people rather than just one person, right? To put it bluntly, a weak master makes his servant eat humans. Servants transform human emotions and souls into magical energy. That is the most efficient way to make your servant more powerful. There are many masters who will kill humans as sacrifices for their servants. As sacrifices? So you're saying that if a master didn't care about his methods, he would kill humans to make his servant stronger? Yeah, but I don't think a, mas a smart master would do such a thing. You see, even if servants are powerful, there is a limit to their magical energy capacity. They can't store more than their capacity, so there is a limit to how much they can kill and collect magical energy. The association wouldn't ignore if you went around killing people, and most of all, other masters might figure out your servant's abilities and identify them from the cause of death, not to mention the identity of the master as well. It is highly advantageous to the Holy Grail War to keep your identity a secret. So a normal master should be stingy about using their servant. I see. Certainly, if nobody knows that you are a master, there's no danger of other masters attacking you. Conversely, if you know who the other masters are, you could definitely pull a surprise attack on them. By that theory, there won't be many masters that would have their servants attack humans and reveal their identity. I'm glad. Then there's no problem that means servants won't indiscriminately attack humans without orders from their master. Right. They are heroes, right? Someone who would go out and kill people wouldn't be called a hero in the first place. Well, 
No, I can't really say that for sure. There are many examples of people becoming heroes just because they were a mass murderer. Tosaka makes an ominous comment. As it seems to be her true feelings rather than just sarcasm, I guess Tosaka is a realist. Tosaka is real as fuck. Anyway, that's what I wanted to confirm. Now you know what kind of being servants are, right? Masters aren't the only ones trying to win the Holy Grail War. As you've entered this battle, you have an obligation to command your servant.